My name is Jesse Hirsch, and I'm a technology futurist, writer, and researcher. And I want to talk to you about what currently happens when governments pour money into supporting startups. Disruption is a word you hear a lot in the tech sector. It drives companies that seek to transform industries, as Facebook, Uber, and Airbnb have done. There's certainly no shortage of people hoping to create a disruptive company, but it requires money, and that's where incubators come in. Incubators are spaces designed to help create and grow a business. They offer educational resources, a place to work, and access to potential investors. Tens of millions of public dollars from all levels of government are being spent to support these incubators. But how do we know that they actually deliver? How are we measuring the jobs they're creating? And who's going to reap the benefit of all that public investment? In Toronto alone, there are now over 60 different incubators. British Columbia has about 20. Montreal has over 15. The hope is that this will lead to the rise of the next Nortel, or Blackberry. Federal government even uses the phrase high growth businesses when describing their desired outcome. But this is not the reality of what happens to startups in Canada. For most of these companies, especially for the entrepreneurs who drive them, the main metric of success is the exit. That exit is the moment that a company sells out. Like when Snapchat bought the Toronto-based company that made Bitmojis for over $100 million. This is when the founders and early investors are able to leave the company and get a return on their investment. But how does this help the taxpayers who put up all that incubator money? What about the broader Canadian economy? Most of these exits mean that the ideas, innovations, and jobs don't stay in the places that incubate them. And even if some of these jobs stay, the ownership of these companies mean that the wealth does not. Because those exits benefit U.S. tech giants like Google, Facebook, Snap, and Microsoft. Right now, Canada's incubator model is serving the interests of major American tech companies. It undermines Canadian sovereignty because the profits and intellectual property generated by these firms go south. But it doesn't have to be this way. Rather than help a few people get very rich, incubators could be used to help create thousands of small and medium-sized businesses. They can do this via the selection process, choosing who gets access to these incubators and how entrepreneurs are guided and nurtured. While these startups may not be destined for purchase by a tech giant, they'll still be able to be active and profitable participants in the Canadian economy. It's time to stop incubating dreams of a billion dollar exit and start rewarding startups that want to stay. For The National, I'm Jesse Hirsch.